Welcome back, everyone, and instead of multiplication this time, we're going to use uh, division to work with decimals, and uh, I just thought we could start off with some Summer Olympics, because the Summer Olympics is coming up soon, and uh, one event in the Summer Olympics is the men's 400-meter freestyle, and each competitor completes eight lengths of a pool. In 2012, the winner of this event was Yang Sun of China. He completed the race in 220.14 seconds. Now, Ryan Napoleon of Australia, he came in eighth in the final heat, and he completed the race in 229.25 seconds. So, on average, what time did each swimmer take to complete one length? And just to try this out, use any materials you think may help you. And once you have done that, I want you to estimate first, and then I want you to calculate the exact time. All right, so St. Pierre Jolie is a small town in Manitoba. Every August, it is home to the Frog Follies Frog Jumping Contest, and the longest jump on record is 5.18 meters. I was thinking about this, and that is absolutely insane, uh, how, lo how long that jump is. So let's say Rochelle entered three frogs into the Frog Follies. The total distance the frogs traveled was 4.92 meters, or 4.92 hundredths of a meter. On average, how far did each frog travel? So for this, remember average means we count up all we have and divide by the number of times, and so we are going to do three frogs. So we're going to take that 4.92 meters and we're going to divide it by three. So we're going to look at a few strategies on how to do that. Well, the first strategy, of course, is using base 10 blocks. And again, I don't uh, exactly recommend this. You can draw it out fairly easy, but just want to show you visually how this could work. So first thing I need to do is get four... 0.92, so I have, there's my 4, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 2. Okay, so hopefully you agree, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 9, and a 2. So I'm going to divide this in three equal groups, because that's the best way to do it. Um, maybe I will... I'll draw some lines across so I can kind of model where the groups are. So let's say I have one here, I have one here, and I have one here. So three equal groups, but here's the problem. I have this guy. Well, what I can do is I can trade him in for some, some rods there. So I'm going to get rid of him, and I'm going to pull out ten of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight... Ten. I have a lot of these to sort, so put one on each group. One, there, go back to this guy. And again, if this is something you like visually, you can just use squares and lines, and it uh, it'll add up just the same way I'm doing, and just sort them into equal groups. you left here and I am left with one left over and again you can probably guess what I'm going to do here I'm going to trade those in for um, our hundredths here so I'll delete this and pull ten of these guys out one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so I'll sort these out one 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 and when I draw these out, I just use dots for these, because it's just quicker. Okay, there, there, and look, that worked out evenly. So there's my answer, right? Well, what is the answer? So I have, in each group I have a 1, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 1, 2, 3, 4. So here's my answer. 1.64 meters was the average that Rochelle's three frogs jumped. 
Okay, let's talk about strategy number two. Uh, let's do a different problem. Luke's frog traveled 16 and 64 hundredths of a meter in four jumps. On average, how far did the frog travel in one jump? So now we have one frog jumping four times. We've totaled it up. He has that many meters. So I'm going to use something called repeated subtraction. Um, you could use long division, and we're going to use estimation to divide this as well. So maybe let's start with this estimation here. 16 divided by 4, we know that it's going to be around 4. Okay, it's going to be around 4 meters, so whatever I do, the answer is going to be around there. So I'm going to show the, sub the repeated subtraction method, and to do that, I just make it into a whole number, and I'm dividing it by 4. And what I like about repeated subtraction is I can choose any number that works, and it'll still add up. And my hope is I have enough room to write it here. So I can think 4 times something. Um, that will be less than 1,664. Well, I find factors uh, or multiples of 10 a lot easier to deal with. So let's say I chose 4 times 100. Well, that's 400. And all I have to do is subtract that off. And I have this. Well, that worked out pretty well for me, so maybe I'll do it again. Another 100. And I'll subtract another 400. And if you want to do things like 200 or something, that could have worked too. But just, it doesn't matter what you choose. You could choose 4 over and over. I mean, it'll take a long time. It'll still work. Um, let's keep going here. Um, maybe I will do 200 just for fun. So 200 times 4 is 800. And I'll get a 64. Well, what if I chose, I don't know, 20? 20? 20 times 4 is 80. That's not going to work. How about I choose 10? That's a 40. Well, I'm left with 24. Well, I know what goes 4 into 24. That's a 6. Minus 24, I'm left with 0. So now all I have to do is add up 100 plus 100, which is 200. Plus 200 is 400. And uh, 10 and a 6 is 16. So 460 is my answer. No, it's not because we are using decimals and we estimated first and we said it was around four meters so I'm gonna put the decimal place right there Luke's frog uh, on average jumped 4.16 meters and again if you like long division you could it'll still work for you as long as you um, find the answer as a whole number and then place the decimal point later um, here's another method and this may or may not work on every time but it is possible we can break up the numbers inside the number and estimate. We already know that our estimation is four. Um, and I've got it in two columns here because I thought of two different ways it could have been broken up. I thought, well, 16, 1,664 could have been broken up to 1,000 plus 600 plus 64 because those numbers divide by four pretty easily. Or I thought, well, 1,200 plus 400 plus 64 will also work dividing by four. So I kind of have two examples of how this could work. It's going to come to the same answer regardless. So I'm going to go line by line here. So let's just start with the thousands places. And 1,000 divided by 4 is 110. So we could say 110 divided by 4. Or 1,200 divided by On our second example, 1,200 divided by 4 is 120 divided by 4. 120 tens. And we get an answer 25 tens or 250. And when I say tens, uh, I'm talking like that place right here. Okay. So we add the zero back in there. So this isn't many tens. So 250, and I get a 300 on the other end. Okay. So we keep that in mind as we keep going. Let's go to the next column. We had 600 divided by 4, which is 60 tens divided by 4. And the other side was 400, because I had a 400, because I, I used a 1200 before. And that's 40 tens divided by 4. Both work really easily. And I get 150 on one end and 100 on the other. And then lastly, dealing with that 64, it's the same in both. 64 divided by 4 is 16. And if I add all these up, uh, I get 250 plus 150 plus 16. So 250 plus 150, that's 400 right there. And plus 16 is that same number we had before. Or 300 plus 100, again, that's 400. We get that there. And remember, we estimated before, so 4 point. 1, 6 meters. It's it's a method that you can use, but it doesn't work every time. If the numbers don't, you know, kind of jive, they don't um, don't jump out. You like, oh, there's a four there. Can I divide this? Um, it may or may not work for you. 
I do recommend the, the, the method I just showed you previously. So let's have you try it. So Jeremy paid $73.20 to put his dog in a kennel while he was on vacation for six days. How much did it cost per day to put the dog in the kennel? So use any method you like, it doesn't matter to me, and I'll go over this in 30 seconds after you finish. All right, so I'm gonna just show you, I'm not gonna do the base 10 blocks, but I'll show you maybe the other two ways. And the first thing that both methods have is to estimate first. Well, $73.20, um, and, I'm, and I'm dividing by six, so it's gonna be ultimately this is our problem. Um, 73 is close to 72, and I know 72 divided by six is 12, so it's gonna be around $12 is our answer. So um, let's go maybe 73.20 over here. I'm gonna do repeated subtraction. Again, if you're using long division, that's fine. Uh, multiples of 10, so maybe 1,000 could work, because 1,000 times six is 6,000. That'll get rid of a lot of these numbers right away, so I'm left with this many. Well, 1,000's not gonna work. Maybe 100 could work. 100 times 6 is 600. I'm left with 720. And that 100 could work again. And that leaves me with 120. Well, 6 times something will turn into 120 pretty quickly, and that's 6 times 20. I mean, if you want to do keep doing 10s or 4s or whatever, as long as it's less than 120, that'll work. So I have zero remaining and I add these up so I have a thousand plus 100 and 100 which is 200 and a 20 so I'm left with this uh, our estimate was around $12 so I'm gonna put the decimal right there and say dollar uh, per day was twelve dollars and twenty cents well if we do the other method I can say to myself well maybe I'll use a different color here we, we were looking for numbers that would divide quickly, so we'll make it a whole number first. This could be 7,200. We know that works really well with our estimation. And what's left over? 120. Well, I know that could work. Um, so I know 7,200 divided by 6 is 1,200. And 120 divided by 6 is 20. So that, if we add these up, we get that again, and that works. So I was using compatible numbers that worked with dividing by six. It just happened to work out for me, so I was able to use that. You might not see it every time, but sometimes you can use it. Okay, I have one more example here, and I was writing this problem, and I'm not sure if the story makes sense, but the math still will work, so it's okay. Alyssa jogged 22.4 kilometers. She can jog seven kilometers in an hour. How many hours does it take to jog the full run? So again, um, if compatible numbers jumps out to you and it does not to me, 200 or 200, you know, 24 doesn't divide by seven very easily. So I automatically am not going to go to that route, but I, I know the repeated subtraction or long division route can work very quickly. So seven times what is less than 224? Well, I could say seven times, I don't know, 10, and that'll be 70. And that'll get 4, 154. Uh, I could do that again. And that's another 70. Or 4 again. 15, I have 84. I could do another 10 here. 70, like 14. And I know 7 goes into 14 twice. Okay. So I have 32 total. 32 hours, well, it's not 32 hours, we should estimate. So 224, mm, we could say 20, or what's close to that? Seven times three is 21. So 21 divided by seven is about three hours. So it can't be 32 hours, it has to be 3.2 hours. There you go. So there's a few methods there to, to divide using uh, decimals with a whole number and we showed some some examples you know some are frog examples and I don't think you're gonna be jumping frogs very often but if you, in case you do 
um, there, there's a proof that math can help you here. So take care, guys, and remember again, in life, math happens.